Hi folks, welcome back to our next tutorial and today we are going to talk about soft states and nested animations. The states we now used are hard states, but we also have soft states, which I want to show you now. For example, if I have the scenario that I want this cube to come in from the left, for example, go out to the right and then come back in from the left. I would do this like this. I have a hard state, which is in. And then I do the soft state, which is out. So what we're now going to do is out is over here. And in is over there. So we make a connection between this. But we want this to go out to the other direction. So we do like this. So now you see we have two animations between in and out. The difference on this soft state is I can define this out value different inside this animation. Like here I can say I put a keyframe here and this is left and then this side of the animation which will be this one I set another keyframe and say this is over here. So now you can see it goes in here and goes out there. And I can also add custom models. Like for example if I add custom model here in and out. And I say you go in from here and out from there. Out in out in. That's already it. As you can see there are still those previous methods on this point. They don't disturb us right here but let's say we want to delete them. You do this by clicking on the connection, not on the state, on the connection. And you go over here to end on previous if idle on in. So you can just reset this one and you'll see the method is gone. We can do the same here. And it goes like this. Functionality is still there, of course. Also, I already showed you how to uh, delete connections like this. You just go on the slice, in this case, into in, delete slice, and it's gone. I also show you how to delete a jump state. Let's just shortly do one jump. So I want to put this on in. Now we have here this jump state and you can delete this state by resetting this value and it's gone. Let's talk a bit about the animation rules. On these connections there are rules. This means the method on here for example will only be fired if in this case the condition is idle, which means one state is reached. It won't be idle in, for example, this case, in the time it's animating. This means if it's going in and I press out, nothing will happen. Because it's not idle. I can also change this to, for example, always. Now you can see, if I go out and in, this will always trigger in, no matter where it is. Also, there are conditions like never targeted or idle. I just recommend to try them out and you'll pretty fast get how to use them. Next, I want to show you how to use the nested animations. So, for example, if we go back to this part of the tutorial when we have the animation for the different corners, uh, we can now just duplicate this element. Or, for example, I merge this to a container, say this is cube one, for example. So now I expose the control of this animation, which is here. Now I can see this control here. And I right drag click to copy it into four instances. Now I've got this cube five times here all with this control channel. 
And now I can just bind this control like this or like this to this animation. Now I define this animation to have, for example, three states. Like state 1, state 2 and state 3. I'll leave it as it is. And I see now the controls of the animations I nested into this animation. And if I now click here with a right click, for example, for cube 1, I can say go from, for example, bottom right to middle. And then from, for example, middle to bottom right. And I can tell the next one to go bottom left to middle and then middle to top right, for example. And I'll just give this random values now. Uh, what you have to look for is that the state has to start where the last one ended. So if I, for example, say I'm going from, let's say, top left to bottom left and then go I would have to start now from bottom left, but if I say I'm starting from bottom right, then this will change this part of the animation so it fits, so you don't have a broken state. I'll take another random value here. Let's say, it's, for example, I, this can stay bottom right. And if I now go to begin, you see this. And on the next state, each cube will go to its destination where I set it and I can easily change this here by just saying for example cube 4 go uh, elsewhere. This saves you a lot of time in bigger animations. Also I can now time all the events to each other. So, like I can say this happens earlier, this later and this earlier and now all the states will be consistent to each other. So that's it for now and in the next tutorial we'll be talking about the template engine.